I have never filleted a fish this size or that looked like this ever before. Totally scares me, totally terrifies me. I couldn't think anything more scary than this, actually. This is challenging. So the first time for doing a hake, he did a pretty good job. It's, it's not an easy fish to do. And he's moving on to the meticulous task of picking the crab meat. Oh, as soon as you push it down and you get a pinch in your finger, it's because there's a shell. So when you've done all that, three times, we're going to dress it with some kimchi and we're going to serve it. Enjoy. Some of these things you can't rush because there's bones and there's shells and stuff. I'm used to being relaxed like Zen Buddha in my home kitchen, so this is much more pressure. It's done, mate, but you have to be very careful. You have acrid stuff. Look at this black stuff. Off here, yeah. Yes. Start again. Start again. Make sure this stays clean. Look at the black stuff. It's not a barbecue. Okay. It's a poached fish dish. Alex must also ensure her duck breasts are cooked to the correct temperature. 42 degrees. If it's 42 degrees, you take it out. As well as juggling the other six garnishes for her dish. It's all kind of last minute um, placing for me, so it's all yeah, quite stressy now. Can somebody take the leaks? I got them on the pass ready, waiting for you. You need to hurry up. Yeah. I'd say that's right. Yeah. Perfect, let's go. Jeff's recooked his hake and got it to the pass. You need to go quickly. Fast, fast, fast. The final touch for Jeff's dish is the aerated crab sauce. Oh, this comes out quite fast. Again, new plate. A whole new thing? Yep. I can save the fish. Give me some leeks. Form. Careful. Is that enough, Chef? Yeah, let's go. Thanks, Chef. I four fish straight away from you. It's mayhem. I mean, I'm just so not used to negotiating so many people, so many different spaces, but also having the, you know, the time pressure as well. So yes, it's, it's bonkers, really bonkers. That fish is just melting. You've got salty crab on top. And that oil and those leeks have almost got a sweetness to them. Creamy broth around it, beautiful. That's just delicious. In terms of what I expected, this was about 100 times more pressured than I ever imagined it would be. Delia, you are kicking the whole thing off. Is that an honour or just a burden? Uh, very big concern. But yeah, at the moment, I'm really just trying to get going with everything. What bit of this dish bothers you the most? All of it. The pasta, really? the balancing. Right. Give it half an hour and we'll see. Half the prep time has gone. Delia's guinea fowl sauce, spiced with saffron, star anise and paprika, is on. Sorry, Julie. Sorry. Oh. But she still needs to make her tortellinis and stuff her ballotines with mushroom and leek. Uh, I've decided to add a bit of nutmeg into this because it makes the flavour a little bit woodier, so that goes quite well with the bird, hopefully. Right. I'm getting worried because you've got a lot of work to do. Yep. Are you doing this? This is the Ballantines now? Yep. I'm just going to mallet them, pound them, stuff them, roll them, whack them in the bags, and then it's done, and then I can get on my pasta. So where's the filling for the pasta? Not done yet? No. Pasta's not rolled out yet. Sauce is not done yet. Artichoke puree is not done yet. We have got to move. Right, properly move. Can I get the guinea fowl and saffron tortellini? For starter, I'll take the cod and squid, please. The guinea fowl, please. Thank you. Uh, guys, your first order in here, we're going five guinea fowl and four cod, please. Yes, yes John. Uh, they made, yeah, finally. Before I thought I might quit my job and go into food, I don't know if that's going to happen now. It's now down to Alex and Delia to communicate so that their dishes go out hot to the dining room at exactly the same time. We've got 10 minutes. How these these take two and a half, three minutes. Yep. And that's literally going to take a, a minute on each side, if that, okay, just to sorry. brown it off. While Delia delicately cooks her tortellini, making sure they don't burst, and browns off her ballotines, 
Alex needs to fry her octopus tentacles and finish cooking the cod in the salamander. So the cod and the squid featuring saffron and red chili and the can pepper, that sounds really exciting because it's going to be a kick to that dish. I'm expecting the fish to be cooked perfectly and the squid not to be rubbery, not tough. Watch your cod, it's burning. Come on, quick, 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 quick. It's just your paper burning, you're all right. Oh. OK, guys, we're going to go on this, please. Yes, chef. I'm not quite sure how the guinea fowl will go with the saffron, which makes it exciting for me. Come on, Daddy, quick, 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 quick. Soup looks lovely, Alex. We ready to go here? No, Chef. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Thank right. you. Okay, Delia. Yep. Six now, please. Yes, Chef. Alex, four fish soup. Okay, John. Delia's dish is guinea fowl and saffron tortellini, guinea fowl ballotine flavoured with nutmeg, and a guinea fowl paprika star anise and saffron sauce. I'd given myself way too much to do. I mean, you've got to push yourself, but maybe I was a bit unrealistic. But the spices that I said were going in there, you could taste them, so. You can get the saffron despite all the other stuff on the plate with the star anise and the paprika and the nutmeg. Yeah, it's lovely, yeah, it's really good. Just trying to find the saffron, but other people are finding it fine, so maybe just me. <laughs> the tortellini is well made, but I think we could have been a little bit bolder with the spicy. Irini, we are about 15 minutes off dessert. With time against her, Irini's tarts are still baking in the oven. A little bit, yeah, just a few minutes. Right. I will get some roasting from John if this doesn't work. On the other dessert, Jilly has finished the last of her ginger-flavoured elements. Ginger comes looking OK, I think. It's just a little bit cakey, maybe, in the middle, but, yeah, on track. Desserts, please. Table one, can I have five rhubarb, two tart? And then after that, I've got four tart and one rhubarb, please. Yo. Well, I'm worried that it doesn't look nice. It cracked. Jeez. I think cardamom can either beautifully enhance or utterly destroy cardamom. Yeah, yeah. It's going to need a really talented cook to pull that. Yeah. My tart is terrible. <sighs> Guys, you need to talk to each other, please. Ice cream's going on the last minute. Needs to make sure it's right. Jilly, how are you doing? I'll be in one minute, Irene. With orders from multiple tables to plate at the same time, Jilly and Irini must now work quickly to perfectly quenelle their Turkish delight and rice pudding ice creams before they melt. I don't know what. Irini, you just about ready? I'm just serving my ice cream now. OK. There you go, Roche. Oh, I'm trying. Just flowers and then we're good. OK, ready. Service, please. The presentation maybe could do with a little bit of improvement, but it actually looks moist and delicious. How are we doing on these rhubarbs? I'll be ready with three rhubarb in just 30 seconds. 30 seconds? Thank you. OK. Thank you. Thank you. Very well done, Irene and Jilly. Good job. Thank, Thank you. you, Chef. Thank you. Irini has made a chocolate and cardamom tart with Turkish Delight ice cream on a roasted Greek coffee and cocoa nib soil. Oh. oh, they're all happy. I'm never happy, but in the context that I'm never happy, I'm happy. Enjoyed the chocolate tart. The cardamom's there. Probably could be a tiny bit more, but it's very, very nice. The lukumi ice cream, really good. And all together, the dish really ate well. Bread and chocolate is not a common one, but that works really good. And the cardamom, well, I think it's very clever. Very clever. Delia is going to have to pipe cream into every pavlova as she plates it. Otherwise, the cream left to one side can make it go soggy. The apple part of the dessert from Panisha has got to be hot. Some of them are exploded, but most of them are fine. Just have to go with it. Then add to that the fact that Jeff's ice cream's got to be cold. Plating up is going to be really hairy. 
Dessert people, the waiters are waiting. Yeah, that's it, yeah, we're happy? Yes, thank you. It's exquisite, it's really stunning. You're doing well, guys, keep on going. I don't many they've taken this? No, I don't understand. In the rush, the team have lost count of how many plates have gone out. Oh. Do we know how many we're short? We don't know where we are with our numbers, so we yeah. don't know if we've done too many, too little, or if we're a little, or, or even if we've lost some around. Wow. Wow. Thank you. Thank you. Back in the kitchen, the dessert team have just one completed dish left. Our maths was dreadful. I need one more. Brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. Oh, God. <laughs> What's wrong with them? It? The blue team's dessert trio consists of pavlova with blackberry compote, apple and cinnamon phyllo parcels, and plum and honey ice cream with a ginger crumb. For a split second, I thought I hadn't done enough pavlovas, and that was a horrendous feeling. Bad math skills going on. I really hope my maths teachers aren't watching this from secondary school. But I've got them out, I've got them all out, so just, just really good. The ice cream, it looked good, very good quenelles, and the crumb was delicious. The uh, apple and cinnamon parcel was absolutely spot on. It's a nice way to finish. It's a lot of work. I just think they should be more elegant and sharper. <laughs>